the human body consists of a body of systems, groups of organs that work together to sustain life. It is bound to weaken with time, but the most prevalent diseases that cause the death of the human body is going to be discussed in this video. It is often thought that the deadliest diseases are those that grab attention and are on the headlines from time to time. However, many of those types of diseases don't rank in the top 10 causes of worldwide deaths as of recent, and diseases mentioned in this video might shock you. An estimated 55.4 million people passed away worldwide in 2019, and 74% of these deaths were because of non-communicable diseases or chronic conditions that progress slowly. And there are several measures that you can take to lower the risk of death from these diseases. At number 9 we have cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is a late stage of liver scarring brought on by a variety of liver disorders and conditions, including prolonged alcoholism and hepatitis. This affects the liver function. The liver is built in such a way that whenever it gets injured, it tries to repair itself. In this process scar tissues forms, and more scar tissues is formed as cirrhosis progresses. The number of deaths caused by cirrhosis continue to increase yearly. Cirrhosis frequently goes undetected until there is severe liver damage. When they do, several symptoms and indicators could appear like fatigue, easily bleeding or bruising, loss of appetite, nausea, swelling in your legs, feet or ankles, weight loss, itchy skin, yellow discoloration in the skin and eye-like fluid accumulation in your abdomen, spider-like blood vessels on your skin and other symptoms. Unhealthy toxins are removed from your blood by a healthy liver, which then pumps healthy blood into your body. Scar tissue develops as the liver is being harmed. The liver then needs to work harder to operate properly as more scar tissue grows, and it may finally stop working. Cirrhosis usually leaves permanent liver damage that cannot be reversed. However, further harm can be prevented and, in rare cases, reversed if liver cirrhosis is identified early and the cause is addressed. Those that are of risk of cirrhosis includes chronic alcohol users, fat accumulation around the liver like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, chronic viral hepatitis. Number 8. Tuberculosis. Between 2015 and 2020, the number of TB cases decreased by 2% year according to WHO. TB is a lung disease caused by the bacterium Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Even though some strains are resistant to common medications, it is a curable airborne bacterium. One of the leading causes of death among HIV-positive individuals is TB. Furthermore, the likelihood of developing active TB in someone with HIV is 18 times higher. Those at risk includes those with diabetes, HIV infection, a lower body weight, proximity to others with TB, regular use of certain medications such as corticosteroids or drugs that suppress the immune system. Tuberculosis is best prevented by getting the vaccination usually given to infant and children in areas prone to it. 7. Dehydration due to diarrhea diseases. The second most common cause of death in children under the age of 5 is diarrhea illness, according to World Health Organization. Each year, diarrhea illnesses claim the lives of almost 525,000 kids. Everyone occasionally has diarrhea. When you pass three or more loose stools in a day, you are said to be experiencing diarrhea. Your body loses too much salt and water if diarrhea persists for more than a few days. Dehydration results from this, and in extreme circumstances, it can be fatal. It is more common in people malnourished, with weak immune system, living in an area with poor sanitary conditions, areas not having access to clean water. It is best prevented by hand washing, better water sanitization, and early access to medical care. 6. Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. This is a degenerative neurologic condition that kills brain cells and causes the brain to shrink. It is the most frequent cause of dementia, which is characterized by a steady deterioration in mental, behavioral, and social abilities and impairs a person's capacity for independent functioning. It's Alzheimer's disease. Out of the approximately 50 million people worldwide with dementia, between 60% and 70% are estimated to have Alzheimer's disease. The disease's early symptoms include forgetting recent conversations or experiences. A person with Alzheimer's disease will have severe memory loss as the condition worsens and lose the capacity to do basic tasks. Symptoms may momentarily get better or progress more slowly with medication. These therapies occasionally enable persons with Alzheimer's disease to maintain independence and optimize function. Numerous services and programs are available to assist those who have Alzheimer's disease and those who care for them. There is currently no known medication for Alzheimer's disease that can stop the illness's progression in the brain. Death occurs in advanced stages of the illness as a result of complications from significant loss of brain function, including dehydration, starvation, and infection. 5. Diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus is a condition in which the body does not make enough or use insulin as it should, leading to abnormally high blood sugar levels. 
it is characterized by elevated levels of blood glucose, which leads over time to serious damage to the heart, blood vessels, eyes, kidneys, and nerves. Diabetes mellitus is responsible for over 2.8 deaths worldwide as of 2015, and it is of two types. The pancreas is unable to create insulin in people with type 1 diabetes. This particular form of diabetes is thought to be brought on by an autoimmune response. In type 2 diabetes, the pancreas either produces insufficient amounts of insulin or insulin cannot be utilized properly. Poor diet and inactivity can both contribute to type 2 diabetes, as can other variables that are at risk includes overweight or obesity, high blood pressure, older age, not exercising regularly, and unhealthy diet. Diabetes is not always preventable, but the harshness of the symptoms can be controlled by exercising regularly and following a well-rounded, nutritious diet. 4. Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is a chronic inflammatory lung disease that results in obstructed airflow from the lungs. Symptoms include breathing difficulty, cough, mucus production, unintended weight loss, swelling ankles, feet or legs lack of energy and wheezing and is typically caused by emphysema, chronic bronchitis, genetics or long-term exposure to irritating gases, or particulate matter, most often from cigarette smoke. People with COPD are at increased risk of developing heart disease, lung cancer and a variety of other conditions. As of 2018, about 16.4 million people in the United States reported a diagnosis of one or more types of COPD. The risk factors are smoking, inhaling lung irritants such as chemical smoke, people with asthma, family history of COPD and also history of respiratory infection as a child. There is no cure for COPD but its progression can be slowed by medications and some lifestyle readjustments, like quitting smoking and avoiding other lung irritants. 3. Lower Respiratory Infections An infection in your lungs and airways is referred to as a lower respiratory infection. It might result from influenza or the flu, pneumonia, bronchitis, tuberculosis, etc. About 3.2 million deaths were recorded in 2015 and lower respiratory tract infections is responsible for about 5.7% of deaths. Lower respiratory infections are typically caused by viruses, but they can also be caused by bacteria. The most common symptom of a lower respiratory infection is coughing. Blood sputum may be produced. You may also have a fever, sweating, or chills, as well as shortness of breath, wheezing, and a tight feeling in your chest. Getting the flu vaccination each year is one of the strongest preventative measures you can take against lower respiratory illnesses. Pneumonia vaccines are also available for those who are most at risk. Also over-the-counter decongestants can be used as, as well as antibiotics for lower respiratory infections. 2. Stroke Stroke affect about 800,000 people in the United States each year. Two things can cause a stroke. A blocked artery in the first case can prevent blood flow to a portion of the brain. This is referred to as an ischemic stroke. These strokes make up 85% of all cases. When a blood vessel ruptures or leaks, it causes the second form of stroke. Thus, the blood seeps into or around the brain's surrounding tissue. This is referred to as a hemorrhagic stroke. If you believe that you or someone you know is having a stroke, look out for these symptoms. Sudden difficulty communicating and hearing what others are saying. One side of the body may experience numbness or paralysis in the face, arm, or leg, difficulties walking and losing balance, as well as vision issues in one or both eyes. Now, a headache is not typically a symptom of a stroke, but some forms of stroke can occasionally be accompanied by an abrupt and severe headache. Anyone can have a stroke, but certain factors increase your risk. Your risk of having a stroke is increased if you are 55 or older, African American, male, or if you have a family history of stroke or heart attack. Being overweight, being physically inactive, drinking a lot of alcohol, and using drugs recreationally. At higher risk are people who smoke, have high blood pressure or cholesterol, poorly controlled diabetes, obstructive sleep apnea, or certain types of heart disease. Knowing your stroke risk factors, following your health care provider's recommendations and adopting a healthy lifestyle are the best steps you can take to prevent a stroke. At number one we have, ischemic heart disease, or coronary artery disease. Ischemic heart disease or coronary artery disease is the name given to heart conditions caused on by narrowed coronary arteries, which carry blood to the heart muscle. It is the deadliest of all. Mortality rates have decreased in several European nations as well as the United States, despite the fact that it is still the main cause of death. This might be as a result of improved public health education, healthcare accessibility, and other preventative measures. However, the mortality rate for CAD is increasing in many emerging countries. A growing life expectancy, socioeconomic developments, and risk factors from one's lifestyle all contribute to this rise. Those that are at risk of ischemic heart disease include those with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, smokers, family history of CAD, diabetes, and being overweight. It is advisable to talk to a doctor if you have one or more of these symptoms. 
coronary artery disease can be prevented by taking medications and implementing some measures to improve health such as drinking only in moderation, exercising regularly, reaching or maintaining a moderate weight, eating a balanced diet that's low in sodium and high in fruits and vegetables, drinking only in moderation, avoiding smoking, if applicable. If you have gained value from this video or enjoyed watching this video, remember to like, subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. See you on the next video and thanks for watching.